let's look at some examples of fields that are and are not conservative. So we talked in the last time about the slope field, or the slopes across some surface. And if you do a line integral of these, so the slope vector dot line element, that gives us a change in height, a change in altitude, and that's a conservative field. For gravity, we can define the, inter the integral along a line of the gravitational force, which is a vector, dot dl, and minus that, as it happens, is the change in gravitational potential energy. Why minus? Well, let's say you had a big mass over here and something is moving in that direction. Force of gravity is in this direction as well, so this integral is going to be positive. So if you didn't have a minus sign, the potential energy would get more and more positive as you went towards the middle. Whereas in fact, we know the potential energy has to get more and more negative because this force times distance is the work gravity is doing on the object, and the potential energy is where that work is coming from. It's the store out of which this energy is coming. So this integral of force dot dl tells us the energy of an infalling particle, and minus it tells you how much the potential energy must have decreased to make room for all that. And we can also work at electric potential, also known as voltage, which is defined very similarly. As you may remember, it's the line integral of the electric field dot dl. And once again, it's got a minus sign there in front for very similar reasons to this. This is telling you the change in energy of a positive charge. Um, and as, as a positive charge moves, this is a change of its energy. Therefore, the potential must have gone by the opposite amount to cancel it out. So these are all nice conservative fields. We can actually plot the field, something like Coulomb's law. Here is a plot of the potential, could be either gravitational potential or electric potential around a positive charge. And you can see it drops dramatically towards the middle and is high further out. So an object up here will fall down and get faster and faster. Those are conservative fields. Are there fields that are not conservative? Well, there sure are. One example would be the vector field of the wind in a hurricane, or a cyclone, or a tornado, depending which country you are in. Now, if you do a line around like this, you can see that the DLs and the vectors of fluid flow are in the same direction all the way around. So the integral of the fluid flow dot DL is most certainly not zero. And this means you can't define a, a fluid flow potential or potential energy or something like that, because if it had a particular value, say, here, by the time you go around the loop, it would have a bigger value at the same place. And then you go around the loop again, it have an even bigger value at the same place. So there's no one value you can define for the sum, and so it's not, not very useful to call some sort of potential equal to this. Another example, of course, is magnetic field. If you have a wire with a current passing along it, use the right-hand rule, you get a magnetic field going round it like this. Line integral of the magnetic field dot dl is also most certainly not zero. In fact, this line integral turns out to be equal to mu naught times the sum of the currents inside this loop. So if you do any closed loop, if there's no current inside it, as you go around the loop, the sum will be zero. But if there's a wire through it with a current passing through, or a beam of ions or anything else, then you add up the current, and that will tell you the integral of this loop around.